Okay, hopefully this is the last installment of my very quick 10-minute NMR. Um, when I last left you, I was processing my data. And I had done a Fourier transform to convert my free induction decay into a proton NMR spectrum. And I showed you that spectrum, but the spectrum was not phased properly. So I phased it using a command called APK. And now the, phase, the spectrum looks beautiful. And I did some expansion on it. And now it's perfectly expanded. expanded. What we need from an NMR at this stage of the game is two things. We need the position of the peaks, and we need the areas under the peaks. The areas are actually going to tell us how much, which is fantastic. Areas are called integrals, and this is going to make more sense after you've had classes with me. So first of all, how do I get the peak positions in the spectrum? Well, what I do is I type dot pp, that's a period, and then pp, enter, okay, and then I get this red cursor. When I get the red cursor, what I do is I put the arrow just above the baseline, then I trace over and up, and you can see this green box forming. Students have a lot of trouble with this in the beginning, but what I want to do is capture my whole spectrum in that box, which I've done, okay? Now, I'll be honest, I didn't do the greatest job. Why didn't I do the greatest job? I wasn't down low enough to get all these peaks. So, I'm going to do it over again. So, I'm going to type enter. I'm going to type dot ret, which it just means return. Then I'm going to type dot pp again, and I'm going to start over because I don't like how I did it. And I'll be honest, most people, when they first do this, it doesn't come out so hot. I'm going to coach you through it. Okay, now I'm making my box. I'm going up. Now I'm going to stop and let go of it. Okay, now I've got my positions. Notice these numbers up here. These are the positions of the peaks. This is like 7.4509 parts per million, 3.0833 parts per million. These are on there, but they're up higher. Okay, I want to save this. So what I do is I go up to this little disk return and hit that. That'll save it. Okay, now it's saved. See how the numbers are up here? Okay. Next thing I want to do is an integral. To do an integral, I type period, I-N-T, integral, area under the peak, right, if you've had some calculus. Enter. Okay. To do an integral, I have to click on these goalposts. I always call these the goalposts. That's a very unofficial name for them. Click on them. Okay. To do an integral, what you do is you take the, the line or the cursor, click on it, left click, drag across the peak of interest and let go. It automatically gives you an area. It's saying the area of this combined group of peaks is one. All areas in NMR are relative. Now I'm going to the next cluster of peaks. I'm left clicking, dragging across and letting go. This peak relative to that one is 0.1982. Now I'm going to this peak. Now this stuff down here is junk. These are called spinning sidebands, and I'll explain them to you when you're in lab. I don't really want all that junk. I just want this big peak here. I'm going to click and drag and let go. Okay. This is saying the relative areas of these peaks is 1 to 0 0.1982 to 1.2. What is that? That's really about 1 to 0.2 to 1.2. What you have to do is convert those numbers into the smallest whole number ratio. What does that come out to be? Well, if I do a little math in my head here, a little arithmetic in my head, it's really, if I multiply this by 5, everything's off by a factor of 5. If I multiply this by 5, it's 5 to 1, if I'm multiplying by 5, to 6. This is going to tell us how many hydrogens are being excited at each frequency. So it's 5 hydrogens to 1 hydrogen to 6. You're going to have to take whatever ratio the instrument gives you, because the instrument's dumb, right? The instrument can do some pretty sophisticated things, but it doesn't know what the data means. It can only tell you the relative numbers, not the absolute numbers. 
So you have to convert these into whole numbers so that at least they're working numbers and we can talk about numbers of hydrogen. So this is saying five hydrogens to one hydrogen to six, but that ratio could also be 10 to two to 12, all right? So at this point, we have all the data we need to interpret our spectrum. What I'm gonna do is save it. So I'm gonna hit that little disk return thing again. And then all I have to do is print it. So I'm gonna go file, print. You'll, this part will be easy for you. Click okay. It asks you a series of questions, just click okay. At this point, you can make multiple copies if you want for your group. Like say if three people in your group, click okay, then click okay, and it'll print out. It's gonna print in the printer that you've used for gas chromatography in the lab. So the printer, the print is coming out right now. Okay, that's how you run an NMR sample. Now, when you're finished, you can take the sample out. To take the sample out, you type EJ again, EJ, enter. The sample's gonna fly out on the jet of air. Very exciting stuff. There's our sample. You take your sample out. You put the dummy sample back in. You set the height on the turbine, like so. You put the sample back in. And you inject the sample. So you type I get. The sample sits all the time. The uh, instrument sits all the time with the sample in. Okay, so I just put the sample back in. Now, what do you do with your sample? You clean it. Don't leave it with us, okay? Take your sample, dump it into halogenated waste like I showed you, and clean it with acetone, okay? These videos, again, are not a substitute for our teaching you this, and I'm going to go through particularly this every step of the way with you. If you don't understand this, don't worry about it, okay? If watching them gets you, just makes you feel more comfortable, that's great, okay? Again, I'm gonna say this multiple times, do not come in the NMR room and start running NMRs by yourself. It's not that you couldn't do it, you might be able to do it, but honestly, the instrument's too valuable to have inexperienced people running it, and usually it takes four or five times before you really get the hang of it. And probably just watching me do this, you're thinking, yeah, maybe it would take four or five times. I don't know. It certainly took me four or five times before I could do it. Okay? So get a little familiar, but when you come in next week, realize we're going to go over it with you. Okay? I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.